the time frame we're talking about here is the next three to five years. How's this going to unfold? And then kind of the next step after that and even past that, Moore's Law. What happens if Moore's Law in? Who's still on Moore's Law? Does anybody even really care about Moore's Law? So the way this is going to work, I'm going to present just a few slides up front to uh, kind of set the stage on some of the key dynamics out there. Uh, then I'll go ahead and introduce the panel members and then launch a couple questions and then it's up to you folks to, to ask some questions on what you guys want to hear from our panel of experts. So let's go ahead and get started. So I think we all know that the, the growth rate when you look back in the, in the old days you know, was running the 15-20% compounded annual growth rate. You know, as we hit in the late 90s, it started slowing down, and now we're basically in the 5 to 10% five growth rate. You can see that how it was spiking, you know, on an annual basis, but overall you can see how the 5 and the 10 year and everything's kind of narrowed down. So basically, the industry growth is slowing down, there's no doubt about that. At the same time, we've got design costs continue to rise. So this is looking at the average ASSP, so application specific standard product. Um, what's, the, what's a typical design cost these days, you know, as we move from, from 90 to 65 to 45 to 32? So an important point on this is, you know, people focus on the mass charges a lot, and that's a piece of the equation. But really, it's the verification time, it's the engineering time, that's a big chunk of the equation. As well as the embedded software. I mean, embedded software is playing a huge role going forward. And that's a key part of the design cost. So how do you, I mean, we've talked about hardware software co-design for years now, but it's not being utilized in mass production as much as people had anticipated. So this is a big deal, and this is a big challenge, and, and we've got to get past that in order to, to keep the cost under control and, the, and, and keep the, the best performance out of these systems. So some other big picture trends are it's not just the, the design costs, it's the manufacturing costs, the, the cost to do a fab these days has gone up to three and a half billion dollars, you know, continues to grow up. Uh, the process R&D, looking at uh, 32 nanometer, we believe it's, you know, 65 nanometer was about a billion and a half dollars to develop. Now as you get to 32 nanometers, so you go past 45 and then into 32, so two generations, you're looking at the thing doubling. You're looking at about a three billion dollar R&D cost to develop a process. Um, we talked about the design costs. I mean, that really drives the fewer designs. You know, there's a lot of implications of what happens to this. You know, when when these things start to happen. So just to kind of run down some of these implications, to kind of summarize. I mean, basically, you got fewer designs out there that all this cost is trying to be amortized across. This is a significant issue. It's really, it's, it's, it's making people have to partner. I mean, it's basically, you cannot go it alone unless you're Intel, and even Intel, it's up for debate when they can go it on their own. So we're seeing a lot of different partnering going on, more so, especially at the 45. Uh, it, I mean, it's pretty much mandatory, and it's across a lot of, lot of areas, you know? So it's almost like you have to put in a whole ecosystem to make this happen. So ARM's gonna be talking about that, Cadence is gonna be talking about that, we were trying to get IBM on the panel because they're clearly pushing ecosystems on what it takes to make this all happen. Um, but again, I think we can explore that avenue. I mean, what does it take, you know? What does it take to be successful and make your customers successful? Um, we talked about the hardware software is key, but really having these high-level platforms that have a lot of design reuse, so you're not reinventing the wheel or not even coming close. I mean, you gotta be, you got to have a lot of stuff that's already pre-configured and pre-done for you in order to really keep your costs under control. Um, and finally, I'm saying, and I'm curious on the panel's thought about this, is that 32 nanometer, I mean, the cost structure beyond 32 nanometer is, is pretty aggressive, you know, on all fronts. And so, is it going to turn into an issue where the haves and the have-nots, where if you're not part of something that's you know, a huge consortium, you're just, you can't, you're not going to survive. And you end up with very lagging technology and have to go after lagging markets. This could happen, so I mean, 32 nanometer, I think, is, is going to be kind of a, a test of, you know, where are, where, where are your ecosystems and where is your partnerships? And if you don't have them a couple years ahead of time, you know, this could be that you could end up on the loser side. <coughs> 